So you know I like a good chip. This is a Fizen PCI-5 SSD controller. And this is a Ryzen 7000 CPU. What's your minimum specification? So if you've seen any of the other videos or a couple of streams I've done, I'm here at AMD's Ryzen 7000 announcement event. Now I can't show you any of the retail CPUs, that stuff is all under embargo until uh, the launch date. And But what I can show you is this. This is a D-lidded AM5 Ryzen 7000 series, two chiplets, so it's definitely a Ryzen 9 CPU. This is, this is the CPU itself, and we have a really chunky, thick, thick <sighs> heatsink. When I say thick, this is hefty. I mean, I don't think I've experienced a heatsink quite this heavy before, even Threadripper type stuff. Probably looking at what, seven, eight mil? And it's obviously got the eight spider legs. Uh, spider legs, Octopus legs, you know, uh, Octo heat spreader, whatever. It's got no markings. And what this chip is, so j j just to be clear, AMD has overclocking experts on staff, and they've obviously been testing the overclocking of the platform in advance of the launch, because obviously they'll want to be talking about records. This is one of their dead CPUs. I've been told, that's what I've been told. Um, though it looks fairly clean, Starting with the heat spreader, just because this is going to be quick and easy. You've got your eight legs, and you'll notice that even though there are four corners, two of the legs are thicker than the others. Uh, on the back, we have what looks like a, a a gold or copper plated. It's probably copper plated. In in the sort of uh, tin nickel alloy, or whatever they use. Either way, this is a thick boy. This is where you know thermal paste goes into, and. The CPU here, so we've got two chiplets, I'll, I'll show some close-up B-roll of this, where you've got the two, um, two Zen 4 based core complexes, uh, the, 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 the core dies. What you've got on here also, you might notice that they're coated. I'm not sure if the final ones will actually be coated. Um, again, in this sort of, uh, what, you'd assume it'd be so um, the metal solder tim binds better but part of me thinks this is just because you can't so you can't actually see the dies underneath so this is tsmc's five nanometer then you've got the io die which is uh, also tsmc six nanometer that's what's going to have um, pci5 that's going to have also the dr5 memory controllers and your integrated graphics and on the back you can see that we have the 1718 uh, pin pads, well we assume they're 1718, the socket's called LGA 1718 pin pads. This kind of looks like AMD's old socket F platform uh, where it's essentially split in half and you've got pins above and pins pins below and then you know you've, you've got the keying um, on one side to make sure it's not put in the wrong way. Though what's, what's interesting is on the bottom this is all pads. If we go back to any of Intel's LGA uh, CPUs, you know, you'll have what's called decoupling capacitors on the bottom. They've been moved to the top and they're in a very specific pattern because when you put your heat spreader on, you don't want them to be in the way uh, <laughs> of the heat spreader. The, the, the danger is gonna be when you put the uh, thermal paste on the top, it's gonna, you got to make sure it doesn't leak to the sides and short any of those decoupling caps or pads. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if there are any products going to come to the market uh, that's are specific designs that you um, put put between the CPU on the decoupling caps to make sure that they don't conduct electricity. Kind of like a, a Vaseline, I guess. I don't know. Um, what I've heard, and if you've seen Steve from Gamers Nexus video, he, he says this as well. It looks like Roman DeBauer is working on delidded tool, and uh, so users can go and delid delid this a lot easier with having all the uh, decoupling capacitors on the top. If you're going to manually delid it, it's 
if uh, you don't want to knock any of those off because that could affect uh, it could affect how your CPU works. Um, so having a tool to do that, you know, effectively and reliably is gonna is gonna be good. What I will say though, just 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 handling this because I've, I've I've had a chance to you know, play with it, it, look at it for for a little while, is there aren't many layers to this substrate. So 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 this green thing, when AMD talks about substrate shortages, they're they're literally just talking about this green thing that's kind of like a PCB. This is what they call the substrate, and it's connected via C4 bumps to the chiplets on top. Now, normally with a substrate, like any PCB, like your motherboard, it has a number of layers, and the idea is that in between the layers, you have inside copper, which carries the signals, and it depends how the copper traces are managed within those layers. The reason why you have multiple layers is sometimes you know, you'll have the wires to cross, and you need to also look out for... Um, electrical interference or thermal interference and that sort of thing. That's why over the years we've seen motherboards talk about having six, eight, 10, 12 layer motherboards, one ounce copper, two ounce copper, that sort of thing. Because I have reviewed motherboards for so many years, I've trained my eyes to read how many layers are on this CPU. And normally with a CPU, you have a fair number, right? The big Xeon 9200 Platinums, the ones that were dual die, high power, they were getting on the region for 24 to 32 layers. Um, they, they, they were some of, the biggest, um, some of the biggest substrates I've ever seen. I've seen motherboards of a similar nature with people like Cerebrus, that, that's AI chips. Here, I am counting at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an eight layer substrate. And now for a CPU that should be going, you know, towards uh, the high end of, of the power for a desktop system, uh, for a CPU that's gonna be pushing 5.7 gigahertz, the DDR5, PCIe5, this is all high powered signaling only eight layers is it just me or does that not seem enough what the the fact that amd's been able to do this sounds almost crazy what they've done is they've gone and put a very good packaging design team together if they're only able if they're able to do this in only eight layers i mean this thing is light if i compare it to the heat spreader right the heat spreader is probably four times the weight it's I'm gonna to have to come to these events A with calipers and B with like a mini set of scales. And 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 I'll I'm sure nobody will believe me if 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 it's for weighing processes. So I mean this is essentially you know what underneath a Zen 4 CPU is gonna look like, at least you know, the dual chiplet designs. Now you've got to wonder, okay, how are we gonna go from dual chiplet to something maybe more? I mean, if you look at it close up, right, the the core complexes are horizontal. Even if you kind of move them to the side, move some of the decoupling caps, you can't really fit a third in horizontally. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to turn them 90 degrees and connect them to the IO die in a different way. Ye Something's gonna have to change with the design of the core complex because the, the idea is that when you have infinity fabric between two chiplets, you want, still want it as close together as possible. You want to minimize that uh, wire latency from chiplet to chiplet through the substrate. So these ideally are as small as reasonably possible within thermal considerations, within electrical considerations. If you turn it around, instead of having the long edge for your connection bandwidth, what they call the chip shoreline, you now have the short edge. So you have to fit your IP on that edge, and then you have to decide how close you want it to the IO die. Now, okay, you could say there's some space kind of underneath the IO die, uh, you know, move it down there, but then again, you also have to put, be able to put the heat spreader on the chip and still, you know, also have signal integrity with uh, the 17, 18 pins. I know I've not been looking much at the camera at this video, depending on how much B-roll I put in. Because I can't cut, again, a new CPU, I'll, I can't take my eyes off of it.
Yeah. It's gonna be fun looking at this. It's it's. I bet you guys can't wait to get a hold of them when they get get to retail. Um, please don't mug me. I know. I have to see when I have to give this back. But um, yeah. This generation is gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. <laughs>